Hi, Lee. It's Danger Woman calling. How you doing? I hope you're feeling much better. Listen, I am more than willing to work with you on this new album. I'm hoping that it'll become a big sensation at my big 5-0 sensation at Dragon Con this year. So give me a call. Hope you feel better. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. This is Lee Satterfield. You're listening to The Lee Satterfield Show. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is our second podcast. With me always is Brett. Hey! And, um, <laughs> you know, you can send us email, too. Send us hate mail, love mail, whatever you want to send us. It's the Lee Satterfield Show at gmail.com. So send us email, and we might read it on the air. We might not. We might just put it in the paper shredder. Up first today, we have Chet Darla, and he's a celebrity dog walker. He's walked all kinds of celebrity dogs, and right now he's currently walking Tyler Perry's dog. Um, maybe the dog's name is Medea? Maybe? We'll see. So he's coming up first, so stick around. All right, uh, Lee, apparently there has been a celebrity dog walking incident. So Chet Darla, I'm told, is unavailable as he handles this situation, and stay tuned for more. All right, since we can't get Chet Darla on the line right now because of the dog walking emergency, we're going to go ahead and call uh, our next guest, Caleb, who is Cherokee County's number one asexual and Morrissey supporter. Hey, man. Hey, Caleb. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm a little sore, but um, how does it feel to be Cherokee County's number one asexual? <laughs> uh, it, it's quite an honor, I suppose. Did you spend the day in bed? <laughs> I didn't spend the day in bed, but I'm in bed right now. So, not in bed, but sitting on my bed, so close enough. <laughs> How did you enjoy the new Morrissey album? It's uh, it's pretty good. It's it's uh, had a really strong start. Um, the first few st- the first few songs were really energetic and really upbeat. Um, but it's kind of like a mixed bag for me. I got to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle, around uh, "I Bury the Living." Did you listen to that one? I listened to all of them. Yeah, it gets a little weird in that area. Yeah. I bury the living and in your lap. He talks a lot about like oral sex, which is kind of weird, <laughs> coming from Morrissey. Yeah, yeah. It's like it every is. other song, there's like a lap or a your lap on my face or whatever, and it's just. And what a was up of, with the one song that didn't go at all with the album that sounded like he was doing a tango? Oh, the uh, the girl from Tel Aviv. Yeah, that was weird. It didn't yeah, go with the rest it, of the album. It was like he was doing a like, traditional song of some country. Yeah, yeah. It, it just didn't It didn't really fit in. And also, like, uh, track 11, Who Will Protect Us From The Police. Yeah, I like that one. It, you like that one? Yeah. No, it just, it, for some reason, it just didn't fit in at all. And it, it, it almost sounded like a... Like a Nine Inch Nail song or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like uh, Trent Reznor's side project. I don't know. Morrissey covering Nine Inch Nails would be better than Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Well, maybe that'll be his next album. Is uh, a Nine Inch Nails tribute. I would love to. I would love to hear uh, Trent Reznor cover Morrissey, and I would love to hear Morrissey cover Trent Reznor. Yeah, man. That would be interesting. Like, uh, like what Peter Gabriel did. He covered all these artists a couple of years ago and put them on a record, and then mm. all the artists covered him. I wouldn't want to hear artists covering Peter Gabriel. That's like when you go to the Variety Playhouse and some shitty local band opens up and they do a Pixies cover. It uh. ru- like ruins your night. <laughs> Has it ever happened to you? No, I never... I, I don't think I've ever seen like a local opener at the Variety Playhouse. Oh, well, you're special then, because every time I go, I'm like Larry David, and it happens to me. 
Because like every time I go see a band play the Variety Playhouse, there's always some lo- local band I've never heard of before that somehow like I don't know they like paid payola or they gave someone a hand job and they got the opening slot and they play a Pixies song and it, it ruins my night. And then I have to go to those. <laughs> then I have to use one of those waterless toilets that smells like piss there, and my night gets extra ruined. Oh man! Well, you should you should uh. Write them a very angrily worded letter about no, that. No, I'll just Yelp them. I'm a Yelp user. <laughs> Are you a Yelper? Uh, no, not really. Oh, I don't you're, really. You're a writer, right? All good writers started on Yelp, correct? Sorry, what's that? You're a writer, right? Yeah, yeah. All good writers started on Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> or trip- yeah, that's the that's the that's the launching off point. Yeah. Or it's TripAdvisor these days, right? right? People are people start writing on TripAdvisor, correct? Yeah, that's where I got my start. You know, I I've been I've written several <laughs> novels now, but people go, "How do you how did you how did you get so good at writing novels?" I'm like, TripAdvisor, of course. Yeah, Google Maps and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, Google. Yeah, whatnot yeah. more and more. You're so paying your dues. I pay my dues and whatnot, and. uh and, and Google Maps. Okay, so getting back to um, the the low in high school record, how many uh, hairdressers on fire w- would you give it out of ten? Uh, I I would have to give it six hairdressers on fire. Okay, six hairdressers on fire out of ten hairdressers on fire. Caleb gives it. What about you? I, I'm I'm kind of with you on that. Yeah. It it wasn't his best, and it wasn't his worst. Yeah, I feel like it was better than the last album. Agreed. Yeah, at least with this album, you can kind of dance to some of the songs. You can't really dance to any of the ones on World Peace. Yeah, it was better than World Peace. But it was it was no You Are the Quarry. It was no Ringmaster. I, precisely, yeah. It's just... I, I Sadly, I feel like those days are behind him. But I, don't, I don't think I, so. I don't think so. I think he's. I think he's got one more, maybe two more good records left. I, I would be, I would be excited to hear it. They can happen, Mech World. It can happen. I mean, I, I hate <laughs> to true. say, I hate to bring up McDonald's when we're talking about Morrissey, but you know, it can happen. <laughs> you gotta, be, you gotta be positive. Even though we're talking about Morrissey, you gotta be positive. Yeah, you gotta be. He's the guy. He's the guy. I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't think he'll come to Atlanta, but. Well, I, I think he's kind of barred. Kind of like it's an unspoken. You've canceled uh, too many times. No one wants to put your show on, kind of thing. Well, I I, did, I just think he has a bad track record with Atlanta. And when I saw him in 2015, at that point he had canceled like four or five times over four years. And the first thing he said when he came out on stage is he said, "I'm sorry, I'm two years late." And like I was like, "No, it was actually four years." Did he, he hear you? Did he did he hear you when you said that? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. I think uh, no. He could because he- I said it that that volume. He so. couldn't hear you over all the fat girls screaming. <laughs> okay, all so the, fat the, girls. the the last song on the album, right? Did it remind yeah, you of like a Nick Cave song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you bit, think? Yeah. Don't you think on that song, Morrissey did Nick Cave better than Nick Cave? Yeah, yeah. He did. And it's like a six out of ten album and Morrissey did the last song better than Nick Cave. I, I would have liked to, to I would have liked to heard a whole record of that last song. Like a whole <laughs> Morrissey forty five minutes of Israel. Yeah, forty five minutes of depressing Yeah, yeah. Forty five minutes of like this really introspective, boring, scary, deep, dark Morrissey doing Nick Cave better than Nick Cave. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. You think? No. I, I'm 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 into it. We should uh, crowdfund that shit. He probably would be like, uh, "You're not my friend anymore. You never were my friend." Right. Right. I don't know. What do you think Morrissey's doing right now? Uh. Well, if this album is any indicator, he's probably spending the day in bed or he's hanging out by the wailing wall in Israel. Or he's sitting on someone's face. 
<laughs> what about this song about like the legs, like opening your legs? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... mean, I like the chorus. Yeah. But I don't think anyone else could get away with that today. Right. Yeah. Like, and uh, in this PC culture we have, I, I don't think anyone can get away with that title or those lyrics. Right. And uh, in Home is a Question Mark, there's one point where he's like, "Yo, you wrap your legs around my face to greet me," oh. and it's like, "Wow, no one else could say that. No one else could get away with that." All right. Any final thoughts there, Caleb? Um, no, no, really, just uh, six hairdressers out of ten, and uh, hope the next one's seven or eight hairdressers, or ten hairdressers, why not, out of ten. Yeah, I hope I hope the cancer doesn't take him, but if the ha- cancer starts to take him, I would love to hear the cancer record. <laughs> Don't yeah. you? Because Morrissey's, yeah, Morrissey's dying record would be perfect. It would be the most Morrissey record he would ever release. I would. I have to agree. Yeah, I would love to listen to Morrissey dying record. <laughs> I'm I'm up for it. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be good. I mean, it sucks he's dying, but he'd be really truthful about it. But I mean, he's been thinking about dying his whole career, so I mean, it kind of kind of puts him on your mouth at this moment. I mean, would he just go opposite and release, like, a kids bop record instead? <laughs> or, uh, now, now that's music? I don't know. So, anyways, nice talking to you, man. Stay asexual, hashtag, and talk to you soon, man. Love you, brother. All right. All right, man. Have a good one. Peace. Good Lee, how are things with you this lovely Friday evening? Ah, oh, they're going okay. I'm a little sore because the therapist wore me out. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm right now about to get online and get to work on my, um, on my danger music and video business. So what's going on with you and your, your life and making music and stuff? Anything good? I'm right now getting ready for my holiday hero campaign. Yeah, well, we're going to put you on the 23rd, if that works for you. I better talk to the boss. All right, well, talk to the bosses and send me a message if you can. I understand. I won't. And And besides, um, is it okay if I bring a chaperone, like my friend was Sean McKinney? Yeah, of course. You always do. (laughs) Are you asking permission right now, Danger Woman? Well, she's, I know she's a little hesitant right now, but however, I know that she, that she will enjoy it. After all, it's not every day. A Saturday. That's why it never hurts to plan up to three months in advance. And of course, up to a year, but we're Dragon Con lately. Yeah, I missed you. I missed you at Dragon Con. I was sick. I know. Did you hear but about? Did, have, did you hear about what happened at Dragon Con, Danger Woman, with the people threw the chairs off the balcony and hit the girl in the head? That makes me mad. Yeah, I do not like that when people try and disgrace the honor of Dragon Con. Yeah, but Dragon Con should have done something about it. Yeah, don't you thank think it, goodness. Don't you think it's sort of Dragon Con's fault in a way? Actually, I was, I was being, I was being looked out for. You see, I had a big responsibility, Lee. What's that? I was assigned to three gentlemen guest stars. Okay. Who are it, they? It's John West, John Wesley Ship. The Flash of Two Generations. Oh, yeah, yeah. He would also play Dawson's dad on Dawson's Creek. And he got conducted into the TV dad, the TV television dad Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, he's in that? I didn't know. Yeah, they didn't tell you. I didn't didn't know that. He's in in the television dad Hall of Fame. Mm Mm-hmm. But not all dads are that way. No, they don't. 
But don't you think it's bad that Dragon Con so unorganized they couldn't figure that out? I did my part to promote my concert. Yeah, you did a good job promoting your concert. But I don't think I'm gonna go anymore to Dragon Con because I think it's getting out of hand. I think I don't think security's good enough. I think it's too many people. Well, at least, I think it's too many people partying, and not enough people actually going to the con for the right reasons. But I go because it's my responsibility. It's your responsibility to perform and put on a good show. I agree. And also, I have to look out for my assigned guest stars, mind you. That's important. You made the program this year. They actually put you in the program correctly. They haven't in years past. They haven't put you in the program correctly. They actually put you... You mean the picture program? No, in the program. They put you in the program like... They put you in the main programming slot. Mm Mm-hmm. That was nice of them. Mm Mm-hmm. So did you have a packed house this year? Oh, yes. And we also remember those who passed away since last Dragon Con. Mm-hmm. Who were the main ones? Well, I sang about Richard Hatch. I sang about Ron Glass. And I sang about Adam West, TV's Batman. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing an Adam West uh, button right now, actually. Of course, yours would say, in memorandum. Mm-hmm. When I see you, I'll give it to you. I'll give you this Adam West button I have, if you want it. I would be honored. Yeah, I loved Adam West. He was great. And I was the one that made him feel welcome. Yeah. Last time he came to Dragon Con, he and Burt Ward gave me a standing ovation. Oh, that was nice of them. Because they knew that I saved the best for last, and they were the best. Yeah, I always liked the old school Batman. Mm Mm-hmm. Who was your favorite villain in the old school Batman? You know how I am about the femme fatale. Oh. Well, which one, which one then? Let's see. I remember there was Siren. I remember there was Catwoman. Those are the only... And, of course, Minerva. Mmm, yes. Would you say that you, you're more of a DC person than a Marvel person? I'm more like a Marvel person because of the fact that Danger Woman was in the Marvel Universe when the Power Rangers joined them and helped the X-Men out. Oh, yeah? Power Rangers meet X-Men. It was a big thing. It was a joint production of Marvel and, say, Bond. And, of course, uh, Fox Kids at the time. Oh, wow. As Danger Woman, I ended up being assigned to Jubilee. Oh, thought really? It was so cute. Did you like the new Power Rangers movie? Did you see it? Oh, yes. And I found out what happened to Hayam Saban. He's currently working as the president of Omnivision. Oh, wow. Spanish channel. Interesting. In case you haven't been keeping up with all the business gossip on the Atlanta Business Chronicle website. I have not. I didn't know you did that. That's crazy. So you keep up with all the business gossip? I have to, and I'm trying to go national, mind you. You are? Okay. Well, hey, I'm writing songs for you for the uh, record I'm trying to make for you, but I also have a cover rendition ready for you for the um, J.J. Wentworth song. Oh, yes. And it might end up being on national TV, you think? It might. We just got to um, promote it right, market it right, and you know, present it to them. But all you got to do is come in the studio and cut the vocals. Of course. The music's already there. Mm-hmm. It's a really rocking version. It's a little, yes, it's a little fast. The- it's a little fast, mm-hmm. so you may it may take you a while, but it's a little fast. Mm-hmm. But um, I just wanted to talk to you for a little bit. Talk to the chaperones about December twenty third at Swayze's. If that date, I better make sure I put that on my phone calendar too. If that date doesn't work, we can move it around some. Okay, just let me know. Email me or Facebook me. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, Billy, this is Lee. What's going on? Hey, this hey. is Billy. Is like a local stand up comedian, and uh, we're just going to ask him uh, his opinions on things and whatnot. And, uh, you know, he's a pretty funny stand up comedian, so well, let's get his opinion, you know? So, Billy, what do you think about like 
all this uh, sexual abuse, harassment stuff, like the the witch pursuit thing thingy going on. <laughs> ah, well, you know, I think um, this has been going on for a long time in Hollywood, so I'm not too surprised. Um, I saw Terry Crews came out and said that uh, Harvey Weinstein touched his dick. Did he really? Yeah, it was on uh, Twitter. I was like, that's a ballsy motherfucker right there. I mean, did, do, you think he, do you think he was just kidding or something? It was like, is a joke? Or? No, he was dead serious. <laughs> Terry Crews uh, was like, you know, uh, like I was, he was like, I was nervous to come out about this because I, at that time I uh, was at a point where uh, I was kind of just starting my career. I didn't want to commit career suicide. I was like, <laughs> yeah, so, that's really weird. I didn't hear about that one yet. But like, some of it's like some of them are so funny. Like Steven Seagal and like George Takai. Like you know, the, the Russian robots are following me and did this and stuff. You know, I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, I don't know. I that, think some of those people are real detached from reality. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, like you know, they're all becoming sort of Randy Quaidish in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Randy Quaid was Randy Quaid called it like three years ago, you know, in the hotel room with yeah. his YouTube videos. That's what they're kind of like. So I mean, well, that's why I think uh, this has been going on for a long time, and maybe we just have more access to information now. Yeah, and you really can't you really can't be totally truthful either, because if you're totally truthful and you really spill your guts, then like you're a bad person, too. Yeah, because if you really wanted to tell the truth then you would be a bad person. You would be a garbage human being, quote unquote. Right? Yeah, you can't say anything these days. Yeah. Even if it's true. Yeah, you know. So I don't, I don't know. So like, what about, what do you think about like the Louis C.K. thing? Uh, I like that he uh, actually like came out and said that he did it, but uh, are we really surprised that Louis C.K. is like pulling <laughs> his dick out and yeah. like beating it in front of women? It's sort of like um, it's sort of like the, the art becomes reality, right? Or, or maybe the reality becomes the art. I don't know. Maybe with him, I don't know. I mean, what it, besides the Terry Crews, Louis C.K., can you think of any other ones that are like the weirdest ones in your opinion? Uh, well, I guess uh, Jesse Lacey from Brand New was uh, showing girls his dick on Skype or something. Mm-hmm. But that one, like, you, you kind of got a question, like, this guy's in brand new, because I've been doing, we've been doing the music stuff for a long time. Some of these girls aren't exactly the most reliable sources. Well, you always have, and you can't say this either, and someone posted this on my Facebook feed, and I'm like, dude, I, I jokingly posted, you can't say that, you know, don't you know you can't say that, I jokingly said that to him, but he said, you know, you know, you know, these flaky scene queens aren't the most reliable sources, what he put, you know? And, uh, yeah. you know, and I'm like, you can't say that. You can't say that. It's 2017. You can't say that, you know. Um, so, oh, you can't. I mean, I don't want to, like, blame any, like, victims or yeah. anything. Vic, but at you're... the same time, I've, I've seen it happen where these girls will, like, lie about their age. Yeah, th there was a girl that lied about, like, um, probably three or four of our mutual friends that we know about uh, around here. And, you know, then she came out and said, oh, yeah, I lied about it, you know. After she slandered them for weeks or months, you know, then she came out and said, oh, yeah, I lied about it. I was going through a tough yeah. time, you know, so. <laughs> I think we should give people the benefit of the doubt on both sides till we get all the facts. But, you know, obviously, if these guys are out there doing this, yeah, they're total scumbags. Yeah, but you can't find the facts. But the brand new thing's hilarious because you it's a funny thing without brand new. It's like one of those things you can't criticize because if you criticize brand new, then like you're a, you're an asshole. Because I made I made a brand new joke online a few times and like everyone like crucified me. It's like the one band that like the girls will defend till, till the day they die, even though there's tons of evidence, there's mountains of evidence, and he even admitted that he did it. And, yeah. But you're an asshole for bringing it up. You know what I mean? Well, I remember uh, when um, the whole everyone was boycotting Swayze's over the blood on the dance floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then half those people came to the show anyway. Yeah, and then one thing about that guy was the girl that said he did it, it, it was ruled in court of law that he didn't do it because he was in a different state at the time. 
That's nuts. Uh, yeah, I don't know. About that. But you look, you take one look at those guys, and uh, like even as like uh, yeah. a young girl, you take a look at the blood on the dance floor guys, and you think to yourself, like, yeah, those are the guys I should be hanging out with. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's you know, I mean, no, getting to know them, they're nice people. They're they're okay. I didn't see them like hang out in their vans with girls or anything, you know. And knowing their reputation, yeah. you sort of kind of watch them like a hawk. You know what I mean? Yeah. You kind of look out for what's going on around you, you know? So you know nothing's going on, at least your space. So, you know, and then, like, the funny thing is, like, the people that were running the masquerade were, like, freaking out about it. And then, like, I think Zach Mahoney, like, called them out and said, like, well, you guys booked them here, 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 here. And you're like, what? <laughs> I wasn't booking for them then. No. Nah. <laughs> You know, and it's yeah. Well, we didn't know. Like we yeah. didn't know. Yeah, you did. It was all over the press then. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, so what do you think about the Warp Tour thing shutting down? Well, I guess they said it's just uh, the last time they're going across the country. But I kind of understand. Like you got like how many egotistical douchebags headlining your your tour, and they're all just fucking around. Like that shit's probably exhausting as hell. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be over, really. I think it's just the marketing marketing scheme. I yeah, think, I remember this happening last year. I don't think it happened last year, but it's just the marketing scheme. It's just like the murder junkies. Farewell tour. The next year is like 25th anniversary of Gigi dying. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's not real. It's just the marketing scheme. So everyone comes out and does it, you know, and also they yeah. can get all the abuser bands to play without everyone freaking out. So if you're an abuser, come on and play this year because there's no way they can boycott us next year because there won't be a tour. <laughs> and also, if they wanted to, they could take off a few years and then relaunch it and it'd be bigger as ever because of member berries. Yeah, we'd call it the the Warp Tour Reunion Tour. Or, or the Warp Tour Relaunch. Warp <laughs> Tour Reloaded. I mean, I don't know. I was thinking uh, maybe they'll start doing a, a cruise ship only for yeah. Warp Tour. But you can imagine how many uh, sexual assault allegations are going to come from a, a cruise line tour. Yeah, when they did when they did the Warped Tour at Sea, all I could think about was South Park's Catholic boat. <laughs> I was thinking uh, the Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> episode where uh, he's talking about the implication. <laughs> None of those 15-year-old girls are going to say no because of the implication. Yeah, I mean... I don't know, man. Most of these bands remind me of Charlie and Mac. So not Charlie and Mac, but Mac and uh, what's the other guy? The others, not not Charlie, but Mac and what's the other guy? Uh, Dennis. Dennis and Mac. Yeah. <laughs> There's too many Dennis and Macs in all these bands. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. So I don't know. Well, anyways, Billy, thanks for talking to me. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks, man. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I got a show at uh, Laughing Skull December 13th. December 13th. Oh. Go see Billy Willig December 13th at the Laughing Skull Lounge, a.k.a. the Comedy Thimble. Thanks, Billy. Hey, Deadpool and Banana Costume. This is Lee. Let's talk about wrestling. Let's do it. Um, Survivor Series is coming up this Sunday, so mm -hmm. what do you think is going to go down? Um... Man, there's a lot of really good matches. Yeah, that, surprisingly, uh, there there is. I, I didn't think it was going to be that way. But it ended yeah, up being I mean, pretty good looking there. Yep. They have, this year, that they've done something that they haven't done in a while where they have, they have a couple tag matches that aren't the actual elimination. They just have, you know, a bunch of exhibition matches between teams that aren't champions. Like, uh... Shield versus New Day, which is going to be really good, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what do you think happens yeah. there? I mean, what's what's the payoff we have here? Like, what do you, what do you think they're trying to do with these exhibition um, matches? I mean, I think I don't know. I don't really think there's going to be very much story, to be honest with you. I think it's just going to be a spot fest, a spectacle, spectacle. Yes. Well, I mean, it, it'll be good matches, but I mean, like as far as the whole pay-per-view as a whole, there's not going to be any, like, stories that get uh, added to or anything. It's just going to be, like, a bunch of one-offs because it's, you know, the show's against each other and they haven't... Even though when they first did the brand split again, 
it seemed like they were going to be battling, but, you know, to what Vince was talking, but they never really did. They kind of just stayed separate from each other until recently. So I think it's just going to go back to business as usual after this. So you don't it's think gonna be good. it's going to be a good pay per view? You don't think anybody's going to get screwed over by somebody? You don't think like genders going to come out and screw somebody over, like <laughs> screw AJ over so Brock wins or something? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about something like that, or maybe um, the only other thing I was thinking is since Kevin Owens and uh, Sami Zayn had kind of been pushed to the back burner during this whole thing, very publicly and obviously that. Maybe they'll interfere, and then they'll keep something going with Shane or something like that, or maybe Daniel Bryan or something. Who do they interfere with? I mean, do you think they're going to interfere with Shane? Yeah, they'll interfere with the uh, with the men's Survivor Series match and make SmackDown lose. I think. So, have you seen this online feud with uh, <laughs> with you know Randy Orton and Kevin Owens? I haven't seen this. No. Oh uh, well, basically, basically, Randy Orton called him. Randy Orton called Kevin Owens fat, and then uh, and then Kevin Re- Owens responded with, "You vape." <laughs> In true Kevin Owens fashion, yeah, that's and, awesome. And I mean, like, that's not even really a cut down, but it is a cut down because, like, you know, only douchebags vape. And yeah. and Randy Orton took the bait, and he's like, "Well, actually, I don't vape," and like let him like a really long <laughs> response. Like a really long, serious response, and it was hellaciously hilarious. Like, really long. You got to look it up. I mean, it's really funny. I mean, can, yeah, it, that's. I mean, the, the whole story is Kevin Owens like surprised some fans at a wedding. He like crashed someone's wedding and like took pictures with them to be like a nice fan, nice to the fans, you know. And someone yeah. posted pictures of it, and then like Randy Orton's like, "Of course you crashed the wedding. There's cake there." <laughs> like, I see this. This sounds like a, some some friendly jesting going on, maybe. Yeah, I mean, is it is it some friendly jesting going on, or is it like part of a work? You know, what I mean, like, is there? Is yeah, it, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, like, prob- so the, is there go- is there going to be like a Randy Orton uh, Kevin Owens thing going on soon? I don't know. So, That's true. I didn't think about that. I mean, WWE could be taking a, a cue from uh, Jericho and Kenny Omega's little Twitter feud that they had before. Jericho actually went on there and <laughs> challenged him to a match. Because I mean, anything, so, yeah, anything on Raw is always like stupid, and anything on SmackDown is always like reality based. Yeah. Exactly. So I just didn't know if you saw that or not, but I thought it was really funny. No, that's that's yeah. great. Well, yeah. So he'll probably come in and it'll look like he's gonna screw over Shane, but then he screws over Orton and yeah. Yeah, you vape. But, yeah. I just... <laughs> Ultimately, I think Sammy and, and Owens will make SmackDown lose probably somehow. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. a good that's a good uh prediction. So what yeah. do you think about the NXT war games thing? That uh <laughs> that's gonna be pretty awesome. I I kind of feel like that they haven't really been talking about it very much on the main show. I mean there was one or two little bumps about it, but other than that, it's just like I felt like they should have made it way more a, a bigger deal because it's like it's going to be the two rings and the cage and the whole nine yards. So yeah, well, I think Triple H has won War Games forever, and Vince has been against it because it was a WCW thing. So maybe this yeah. is like finally he's getting his wish, but it's like at NXT, so it's like a testing ground. Yeah. Well, I, I think it might have been uh, something might have gone down to where he was like. Come on, Vince. It's, it's at the War Games, and Vince was like, "All right, well, you got to be on the pay per view. <laughs> you got to be on the Raw team." <laughs> that was their <laughs> that was their agreement, probably. Uh, <laughs> who, who knows? But um, okay, so yeah. going going to December, um, the pay per view they're going to have in December is going to be Clash of Champions, and it's flip sides. I guess it's going to be on SmackDown brand. Yeah. I think it's just it's, it's replacing um, Night of Champions, right? I yeah, think that's the one that, yeah. yeah, but it's going to just be SmackDown brand only. It's not going to be Raw. Which, it's going to be SmackDown which brand. Makes sense, which kind of harkens back to what I was saying before that 
that SmackDown is way more about the championships than Raw is. So it makes sense. <laughs> they actually showcase the, the titles instead of them just being jewelry, like it seems like on Raw. So what do you so, think we're going to be at there? What do you think is going to be like kind of what they're going for when, once we get there? Like, do you think you're going to try to keep it on AJ or do you think it changes? See, I don't know. See, I was thinking that maybe they'd give AJ the rub and let him get over on Lesnar so that when Gender wins it back, it'll be that much more intense, you know? It'll make yeah. Gender look like a superhero if he beats AJ when he beat Brock. But Gender is uh, is billed to face Triple H at the India show that they got coming up, so... Well, maybe maybe he'll get the rub from Triple H at the India show, too. Yeah, that God, man. <laughs> but you know, maybe maybe that maybe they're gonna give uh, Jinder the rub and then just move AJ over to over to Raw. Yeah, that, I would, I could see that. I mean, that's what they do with that, all the good SmackDown talent. They just move it over to Raw, and SmackDown still kicks ass. Honestly, I think yeah, I could see AJ being kind of like of the free agent. Like kind of like John Cena did for a little while, where he just jumped back and forth. Maybe AJ will do the same thing. In a way, he is the new John Cena without even trying. Yeah, definitely. For um, sure. Okay, so what about the U.S. title come next month? Um, you know, Clash of Champions. Who do you see having uh, it? Uh, I mean, I just don't see much faith in in Corbin. I don't think they have much faith in him. Who are they going to yeah, Who I are they going to put it on? They're leaving the belt on him, but they're they're making him face in Cara, and I don't. There's really nobody else that's because there's so many tag teams, and the tag team wrestling is pushed so much. It seems like all the mid carters on SmackDown are just in a tag team. Well, we'll so, get there in a second. We'll ask about that in a second. But as far as yeah, the U.S. title is like concerned, there's, there's nobody really because it's Sin Cara. Mm-hmm. That's going after Corbin. It's like well, that just really means Sankara is going to lose. I mean, that's just you know, you know, he's going to yeah. lose. I mean, duh. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's it's good for that to keep Corbin looking good. I guess I don't know. I mean, Ziggler or uh, Rude or Bobby Bobby Rude. Yeah, they could probably put it on him. That would make sense. Okay. Well, what about the tag teams come then? I mean, it seems like there's a lot of strong tag teams building up on SmackDown. Finally. Yeah, that's that's the interesting part. They keep doing this thing where the Usos are beating everyone. Like, they're unstoppable. The like penitentiary. They beat, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they beat, uh, that promo that they cut on SmackDown was probably my favorite one that they cut. They just, they just came out there and said that we've beaten everybody mm-hmm. who gives a crap about Jason Jordan and Shelton Benjamin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically is what they said, and that was great. But, uh, so, like, they beat New Day so bad, New Day was, you know, over as hell, that the New Day didn't even try to get the titles again. So, <laughs> the, the New Day doesn't know. need a title because the title's a problem. Yeah, no. You know, they I mean, didn't need them anymore. But, I mean, in storyline and kayfabe or whatever, they just kind of were like, well, right, we're going to move on to something else now. We can't beat you. So, I mean, they'll need them eventually to have cred, but they don't need them now. I, I think that maybe they could put them on the, the fashion police guys, you know? I mean, Breeze Dango. Yeah, that, yeah this, the fashion files thing has it's been pretty funny. Well, I mean, it's but, not that uh, funny, but they're just over. People like them. Yeah, I'm, you know, exactly. For whatever reason, people are into them. They're good wrestlers, well, you know, and they're funny. They're entertaining. Definitely. I mean, Tyler Breeze carries that team for sure. Yeah. But I'm glad that he's... How, whatever capacity, I'm glad that he's in some sort of spotlight because he is. Yeah, he's you just, really good. He you just is, hope Van Dango doesn't ruin his career. Exactly, because <laughs> he, you know, he was the he was the ring general down in NXT. Like he was there for a while. Yeah, I mean, I met I met him I met him years ago, several different times. I mean, when I got my picture yeah. taken with CM Punk, he was injured and he was the guy like processing the pictures. You know, <laughs> super nice guy, you know, yeah. paid his dues, you know, yep, great definitely. attitude compared and to. He's, he's totally a company man. He toes the line for sure. Yeah. So compared to the other guy who's a complete douche, you know, yeah, definitely. 
definitely. But, but maybe, <laughs> but who knows? Maybe him rubbing off on, you know, Fandango, maybe he's changed his attitude some. Who knows? I think that's exactly what's happening. I think that maybe it might have been the, it might have been the suits and fan, uh, uh, Tyler Breeze at the same time kind of being like, Fandango needs to get his shit together and maybe Tyler Breeze was buddies with him from back in the day and was like, well, let's start a tag team and I'll, you know, straighten him up or something. Who knows? Or if not, maybe he is. But anyway, what about the women? Where are we going to be with the women come next month? Clash of yeah, Champions. See, so, I don't, I'm not cool with the fact that they they dropped the belt to Charlotte. I mean... Too fast. Yeah, but it's, I, I felt like that they, they're just doing it just because they, I don't know, I guess they felt like Natty wasn't a big enough draw, but I mean, her and Alexa have history. So it kind of makes sense for them to keep the belt on Natty. So it'd be like, well, you're on a different show now, but this happened back in the day, and blah, blah, blah. But now it's just kind of like two good wrestlers which, I well, mean, it's it still going to be... Been, be a, it would have been two good wrestlers either way. I, I think it was... Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it's just two good wrestlers now. There's no history at all. Yeah, I agree. But I think it was more like, yeah. oh, Ric Flair got sick. He did definitely. It's definitely a feel-good thing, which is... A man, if... <laughs> in a perfect world, it would be great for Alexa to be super heel and just cheat and beat Charlotte just kind of like stop this good feeling train that's going with Rick but I don't think they're going to do that I think Rick Flair is going to be ringside and yeah most Char- likely Charlotte's Charlotte's going to win and blah 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 it's going to be real I safe, mean Rick but... didn't Rick didn't show up in Atlanta so that's true but I mean so he'll he, they're going to save him for Survivor Series yeah exactly so, I mean, everyone so, everyone I mean, thought he would show up in Atlanta, and he didn't. He's going to show up at Survivor Series ringside, and Charlotte, Charlotte will beat Alexa for a pointless match, for a feel-good yeah, I mean, moment. Poor, poor Alexa, but, you know, speaking of company men and women, she's definitely one of them. I think that's why she's, you know, she's the best. gotten the push. Yeah. Well, she's she the best. She definitely does what she's supposed to, too, I think. She doesn't, you know. She's Talk the back. best on that side. I mean, no, no offense towards Charlotte, but you know, she's the best on that side. I mean, I like Natty more than Charlotte on the other side, but whatever. Yeah. Well, but I mean, there's a reason why Alexa is the only woman that's had both women's championships. I think people forget that. I think people forget that she's the only one that's won both belts. Like, there's a reason why they did that. That's because they suspend their disbelief so much. Because she's she's that good. She's that good of a heel. Yeah. And that's the whole point. Because if you're a good wrestler, exactly. if you're a good heel, it makes you forget that it's fake. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the best wrestlers do that. It makes you forget that that you're watching something that's predetermined and so on and so forth. You're just like, you know, super human superheroes. All right, man. Th- thanks for talking to me. See you later. Thanks, man. Cool. All right, we're on the line here with Chet Darla, celebrity dog walker to the stars. Hello, Chet. Hey, this is Chet's manager. You got him for about two minutes. Hey, hey this is Chet. Hey, Chet. Uh, nice to have you back on the podcast. Well, um, last time it was just, uh, you know, it was mind-blowing. It was great to have you, Chet, last time. Yes, thanks for coming. I appreciate that. So many things, right? So many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I hear that you're walking uh, Tyler Perry's dog now. Yeah, there was an incident earlier. Uh, I can't get into it, uh, I... but there was an incident. And but you know, it's a uh, it's a bigger dog, and you know, things happen. And uh, you know, that's where my expertise kind of comes in, and uh, I have to I have to <clears throat> take the bull by the horns and. <laughs> you know, I, I got to do my job. So that's why you, we, we couldn't talk to you earlier. That's why you were late. Something happened, right? Yeah, something, right? Something. And you you say it's a bigger dog, like meaning it's a, a bigger dog or a bigger celebrity. You know what? I probably said too much. Um, 
But again, um, my God, talking to you is uh, is incredible. Just hearing your voice, and you know the uh, the the joy I have of talking to you is incredible. And I honestly can't wait to come back on and tell you some more things. Just tell you everything there is to know about dog walking, as much as I can say. Well, it's great to have you back. Um, we had you last time, and we got so much out of it. Thanks thanks for being here. Um, you walked Lady Gaga's dog last time we talked to you, and uh, you didn't really tell us much about that then. Could you tell us anything about that now? <laughs> I may or may not have walked Lady Gaga's dog. Uh, okay. Um, did you right. Wa- right. Huh? Are we live? Yeah, we're yeah, live. Right. We're live. We're live. Right. Yes. Um, yes. And there was some, uh, you know, some things happened, and you know, special moments for me when I'm out walking, and let's say somebody comes by, and I get to say hi to him while the dog is waiting on me to get done talking. It's just nice to talk to people. And because, you know, I'll try to talk to the dogs, it doesn't work. So are you, are, you more of a, is, are you more of a people person than a dog person? Huh. That's the million dollar question. <laughs> so are Agreed. You, agreed? What, do you, what does that mean? Like you, you agreed that you're a dog person or a people person? No, I was agreeing with you. I was hoping for your agreement, and then, and that that was the million dollar question. Oh, okay. So, but um, you know, I got to tell you, the uh, dogs that I walk are incredible, and I love talking about them. And you know, I love sharing my stories as much as I can tell. And I honestly can't wait to come back on and well, tell more. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, did you walk any dogs in between Lady Gaga and Tyler Perry's dog? I'm exclusively a dog walker, um, and I did walk a couple dogs, uh, just pro bono work. And I was just, um, you know, I have a way with walking dogs. They walk well with me. And, uh, you know, like if I'm on the sidewalk, they're on the grass to save their paws. Um, they're the paw rating of dogs, walkers, you know, it's just judged by, you know, how well they can walk on grass while you're walking on the sidewalk. Is it out of like 10 paws or out of five paws? Um, yeah, you got me. I made that up. That doesn't exist. Okay. Sorry well, about that. Um, okay. I was just that was a joke. Hey, if you can hear me on the other line, you can. Your phone's working, right? Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Um, sorry, that was a dog walking joke. Okay. Was it an old dog walking joke or a new one? An old one. You want to hear a new one? Yes. Um, heads or tails? Heads. Always tails. All right, Chet, uh, Chet Darla, it was nice to have you. Um, we'll have you on again sometime soon. All right, thanks a lot. Always and a pleasure. You. And I cannot wait to come back on and tell more stories and jokes. Maybe, maybe I can tell more jokes. Okay, we'll and, see. And uh, again, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chet. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and feel free to send us an email. Delise at a field show at gmail.com.